Yo, what is going on YouTube? I am Germ here. Today I want to talk a little bit about TSM because obviously um, so far we know that they have a lot of big crazy changes coming. Not only have they lost their head coach, Bjergsen is gone, he's not coming back. Uh, we kind of assume and expect that Power of Evil and Lost will also be out. We know that Sword Arch already out. So we have some answers, we have some pieces of the puzzle, but Who's going to be replacing them? What is going on? There's still so many questions left to be answered. And right now, we're like six, seven, eight days away from the start of free agency. But, uh, you know, we can talk about some of the things we do know up to this point uh, and just kind of round up all the TSM information in one video. Um, but make sure you guys do check out the first link in the description below for my Twitch streams, twitch.tv slash I underscore am underscore germ. Uh, I think it's really, really awesome and exciting to get to interact with people in real time. You know, I can answer questions. I can uh, talk with you guys way, way easier over there. And it's really, really fun uh, to hang out on those streams as well. So definitely go drop a follow maybe a prime maybe a sub uh but with that being said let's get right into this so uh again what we do know um some things that we do know for sure about tsm or you know for sure you know for the most part, uh, Reggie did say in his AMA on Reddit or Q&A, whatever he's calling it, that uh, Hooney and Spica will be back for the 2022 season. So we do, uh, we can kind of slot in Hooney into the top lane and Spica into jungle. Um, but we do know that Power of Evil is allowed to explore options for 2022. It does seem like he will be uh, replaced, most likely maybe heading to Fnatic, maybe heading to one of the lower tier North American teams. I don't exactly know for sure yet. Um most people do expect Lost to be gone, maybe sent back down to Academy, maybe just gone altogether. I would assume more so gone altogether rather than sent down to Academy, but um, Academy is a very, very real possibility as well. Um, and then, you know, all the different AD carry names being thrown around, but TSM has actually already formally announced, you know, the fact that Sword Art is gone. So starting with one of the most important positions, obviously mid. Depending on who you get to be the mid laner, it's going to be a very, very big deal for TSM. Obviously with Bjergsen leaving, knowing that you're going to have to be competing against Bjergsen, uh, having to compete against some very, very other good names, uh, very other, uh, very good other mid laners in the LCS as well, and just knowing how important uh, and prestigious the mid lane position is, especially for TSM. Um, so something that I thought was interesting is I was, you know, going through Reddit and I actually saw this. It says, LEC Wulu confirms in a Twitch reply that Humanoid I'd want to come to NA. And the funny part about this is this is actually from my Twitch chat. Uh, you know, when I was streaming one day, Wulu and Alejandro and a bunch of other guys bloop, they all were in my chat, you know, kind of talking rumors and all that stuff, which was super, super cool. Uh, and some people in my chat actually got to ask them some questions directly. And somebody asked Wulu, Humanoid's going to Fnatic, right? You know, once people heard that Niski was potentially getting sold off to Cloud9, it seemed less and less likely that Humanoid was going to be going to NA, and more likely to a lot of people that Humanoid would be going to Fnatic, because it just made too much sense. But Wulu actually says what he is hearing right now is that Humanoid wants to go to North America. He wants to leave Mad Lions, and it's not just as he wants to leave Mad Lions to go to Fnatic or Rogue or some other North American, or some other LEC team or whatever. He wants to come to North America. Uh, and when you start looking around at all the North American teams, there's really only a few options. You know, if TL's getting Bjergsen, 100 Thieves has Abadage, if C9's getting Niski, then you're really down to just two teams. You have evil geniuses who the rumor is that Peter Dunn would really, really love to call up Jojo Pune to the LCS. He really thinks he's ready to go. Um, is the rumor, you know, very, very speculative, but that's what people are claiming. Um, but EG Humanoid is a very, very real possibility. You could absolutely have, have some kind of roster for EG like um, Impact, inspired humanoid Danny Vulcan, and that would be a very, very sick roster for Evil Geniuses. Um, but if Evil Geniuses doesn't work out, the only other possible option left in North America is going to be TSM. So humanoid to TSM, um, you know, whether you think they're more likely, less likely, whatever in Evil Geniuses, they're somewhere in that mix. They're somewhere in that running. And I think that would be very, very exciting because obviously getting humanoid would be an absolutely massive, massive move. Um, and, you know, Wulu in his spreadsheet, he does have uh, this move of, you know, players going to NA with Humanoid. Um, he doesn't have it as likely or confirmed or anything like that, but he kind of has him in this section over here where him staying with Mad Lions is absolutely still possible at this point, you know, depending on uh, working out buyouts and where Humanoid wants to go and uh, if Humanoid likes this Mad Lions team or whatever, you know, they have uh, Unforgiven in there now as a new AD carry with Karzy leaving. Um, but... Uh, there is very, very real possibility that Humanoid does leave, but it seems like Mad Lions or North America for Humanoid. Mad Lions, Evil Geniuses, or TSM. Doesn't really seem like Fnatic is an option at this point. So that is kind of interesting there with the mid lane position. Also, um, there are some other people talking about, uh, this is LCS Doggo, just like another rumor account, kind of a random guy popping up lately who said, uh, if TSM does strike out with Humanoid, it's highly likely that TSM will pick up a Korean, um, but don't get your hopes up. It's more likely they're going to get an Academy prospect, you know, like maybe some 
some younger, more up-and-coming Korean player that doesn't have a ton of star power, doesn't have a big name. It's not like they're going to go, um, you know, thinking back to some other big signings. They're not going to go out and get somebody like Crown or something like that, you know, kind of an aging Korean who already has a lot of, you know, name value. And so if they're going to go get a prospect, probably somebody, if you don't follow the Eastern team very closely, probably somebody that you've never heard of. And um, I know for a lot of TSM fans, fans and myself included, that's not going to be very exciting. That's not exactly what I want to hear. Like, yes, is getting a, a young Korean prospect really cool? And maybe in a couple of years, he'll be absolutely insane or cracked or whatever. Yeah, sure. But getting some random no-name guy that you never heard of, that can only ever be so exciting. And Korean prospects, just like with any other prospect, are only, you're only going to hit on them so often. You know, a prospect is a prospect is a prospect. Sometimes they're going to be as good as advertised. Sometimes they're going to live up to their potential and sometimes they're not. But you also have to understand that this is a Korean prospect who is going to be, you know, brought up under the TSM banner by TSM coaching, management, staff, all that stuff. NA solo queue, NA infrastructure, all this different stuff going on. So maybe he even has less chances of developing than a normal, you know, Korean prospect or whatever. But um, I do agree with what this account's saying. It does seem like if TSM doesn't get humanoid, they want to go for a Korean heavy um, roster, you know, potentially importing a Korean mid and support to go along with like Huni, Spika, Tactical. Um, there's a rumor that uh, Spika is working on learning Korean right now. Obviously, Huni already speaks Korean. Um, in the bot lane, the rumors are... I I really do expect Tactical to be the AD carry for TSM at this point. Obviously, Tactical has a history with TSM already. Obviously, he's being kicked out of Team Liquid for Han Sama. Um, And, you know, there's definitely going to be some interest for Tactical. But again, a lot of the top teams are already going to have AD carries. Um, You know, maybe Cloud9 could bring in Tactical. But um, for the most part, TL is going to have an AD carry. Hunter Thieves has an AD carry. EG has Danny, depending on what they're going to do with him and all that stuff. Uh, And then in the support position, I really have no idea what TSM is going to do. Again, it could be another situation where they try and import a young Korean player somewhere. There is some people, um, I believe, like in this roster where some people are throwing out Ignar as a possibility. Um, and then Vulcan is absolutely a possibility as well. Um, you know, depending on T- if TSM does get somebody like Doggo, who obviously this dog emoji is talking about him. Um, I know the, the rumors are kind of heating up a little bit that Doggo might have some interest in TSM. Uh, but if they do get a Korean mid plus Doggo, they'd obviously need a resident support like somebody like Vulcan. Um, so, you know, TSM, the rumors are starting to wind down. We're starting to collect them in. We're starting to corral them in a little bit, but still nothing really solid in mid AD carry or support. I would say the most, if I had to guess, I would say the most concrete rumor at this point is tactical AD carry for TSM. I do expect that to be the most likely. I don't think that's hundred percent at all. I don't think that's locked in, but I do, you know, at least from what I'm hearing and the people I'm talking to and just kind of how it seems things are going right now, it seems like mid and support are much, much more up in the air. It seems like humanoid, you know, maybe isn't convinced of the roster TSM has, or maybe he's really impressed with the roster that EG has, or maybe they're still working on buyouts or whatever. And then support, I really have no idea because Vulcan could very, very easily go to evil geniuses. Um, I wouldn't really be super excited about TSM Ignar. That's not really something I'm about. Uh, and then again, I don't follow uh, the LCK or China or anywhere super, super closely. I know the big names, the big players and stuff, but I definitely don't know the prospects, the young guys, the new up and comers and all that stuff. So uh, TSM might have a very, very new look in 2022. It might be very import heavy. It might be a lot of players you've never heard of. And in the end, it might not be all that exciting, which especially with, uh, you know, TL, Bjergsen and all that stuff going on might make me a little bit more interested in Team Liquid heading in the near future than TSM um, because I want to be excited about my roster. I want to be excited about my players. I want to see faces, um, you know, that I've heard of or know of or something. And, you know, maybe we'll come to know them over time. But really, really weird point in time for TSM right now. They have some chances to hit it big. They have some chances to to really have kind of a developmental roster. I don't know. Um, but this is kind of the latest information in the three uh, TSM positions that are still kind of up in the air. Again, six, seven, eight days away from the start of free agency. Stuff's going to start heating up, but we're not quite there yet. But that's pretty much it for this video today, guys. Definitely drop a like if you did enjoy it. Uh, leave a comment down below. What do you think the TSM roster is going to be, should be? I would love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions. Subscribe to today and all my latest content. Hope we catch you guys in the next one. But until then, peace.